What you guys today we're taking a look at how to fix too many background processes on your Windows PC. Now we all know that Windows is a bit of a hog and most of the people that have a Windows based system will have a lot of processes running in the background and this concerns a lot of people. The only way you're going to be able to reduce these processes is by disabling a bunch of these in Windows. Now a lot of people don't like to tweak and tinker with their operating system but if you do then this is one of the ways you can go about reducing the processes on your computer especially if you've got an older computer this does sort of slow down the pc and make it a bit sluggish now we all know that windows comes bloated with tons of apps and also other services that you don't need and you can go ahead and disable a bunch of these now remember when you're disabling stuff to always create a restore point so you can roll back if you don't like the changes you've made. Also use software that can reverse what you've done on that computer so you don't damage the operating system and then have to reinstall Windows. Now we all know that privacy concerns on these systems with installed apps and privacy settings also slow down the system because you have a load of background apps running on your computer and this takes up precious resources and if you've got a low end system with like eight gigs of RAM or maybe an older uh, generation system where it's like a fourth gen or something like that, these can sort of grind to a halt if you've got Windows 10 or Windows 11 on your computer and you don't have a lot of RAM, it will start using up all of this resources and it will make the system really slow. So what I'm gonna do here is show you a real simple way of making it a little bit more zippy and a bit faster. But again, do this at your own risk. Now, one of the more simpler ways of doing it is using programs like ShutUp10 or O&O App Buster. And this will remove a lot of the blow inside Windows. And you can basically lighten the load on Windows itself. Now, you can also use your own custom ISOs of Windows as well, which will make it super lightweight and low on memory usage as well. So if you want to go down that route, I've covered videos on that in the past but make sure you make your own ISOs instead of using someone else's. Now, looking at what we've got here, this will remove all of the apps that are built into Windows and come bundled with Windows. And all you need to do is open up the application and check mark all the apps that you don't want. These are all forced on you by Microsoft and bundled into the actual operating system itself. Now, again, Cortana and Windows Defender and all these services will be running and they do take up a fair bit of system resources. So what can you do when you install Windows? You're best to do this on a brand new, fresh install of Windows and then remove all the stuff you don't want when you get your fresh install done. You can then go ahead and disable a bunch of stuff that you don't need and give you back some sort of system resources on the system. Now, just be careful not to go too far with removing loads of stuff like Windows Defender and things like that. Yes, it will lower the system resources, but it'll also leave you vulnerable. And again, remember that you are going to have to install other applications that you use on a regular basis. And this, of course, will start to make the processes rise again. So when you see people talking about uh, using like 50 uh, system resources when they install Windows, that's on a completely empty system. Once you start installing Photoshop and all your other uh, driver packs and stuff like that, it's going to start using system resources. Maybe you've got RGB lighting and stuff like that on your computer. Once you start putting Armory Crate on and other uh, stuff like that to control all of your lighting and other things, then this is obviously going to cause a service, which is then going to be creating processes on your PC. So it's a little bit of a, a double-edged sword, really. The faster you remove them, when you start installing loads of software, they just come back again with other types of processes. Now you can right click on these and remove some of these as well, physically like this, but some of them are built into Windows and they won't let you use this method for uninstalling. So you have to use apps to remove them. Just be very careful on some of the stuff that you are removing. But once you right click on these and uninstall these like so, these will all be gone. Now, these are not going to be using a vast amounts of system resources. But if you don't want them, then why have them on your computer in the first place? And these will be on there after you've done a fresh install like this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean this all up and remove these from the computer. 
So let's get to the meat and potatoes of the video, which is basically your uh, O and O shut up 10. This is working on Windows 11 and Windows 10. And what this is going to do is uh, adapt your security settings and protect your privacy and also disable a bunch of features. So make sure you understand what you're doing here. Chris Tires Tech has also made a little application which will do some of this stuff as well by using Shut Up 10, but you can use whatever method you like. I'll show you both so you can see them, but just bear in mind you are making changes to the operating system and uh, it's gonna basically uh, disable a bunch of features. So be careful on what you disable because if you go too mad here, you are going to end up disabling your microphone, your camera, and things like that, which you might need. Using the basic uh, settings here, it's not going to disable those features. So just make sure that you use the right one. You can see it's got like a traffic light system where it says yes, limited, and no. And up the top, you can apply the base settings here, and it will also create a restore point so you can roll back. You can also revert back to the default settings of these if you don't want them anymore and something's not quite working correctly and you can't work out what it is. Now, of course, all of this is making tweaks and changes to your OS, and this can obviously break things. So be very, very careful with what you select here. Some of them are pretty aggressive out there. There's some scripts out there that you can run. Just make sure you understand what is in the script and exactly what is actually disabling on that computer. Because if you need something, and you remove it, some of the scripts I've seen out there online don't have any sort of restore point on them or restore feature, which allows you to put the settings back to default once you've made these changes. With uh, Shut Up 10 Plus Plus, this will allow you to basically revert back to your default settings if you want to, as you can see here. It's got recommended and somewhat recommended settings, apply only recommended settings, apply all settings and undo all changes factory settings if you want to go back it also uh, automatically creates a restore point when you run the program so bear all that in mind so depending on how aggressive you want to go here will determine how many processes you reduce now this is not installing any program this is basically running as a portable application you run the changes restart your pc and then basically go back. You can see by running the more aggressive one here, it did actually disable the access to the camera and the microphone. You will need to toggle these back on if you use the more aggressive uh, one on this. So be very careful with these particular programs because I've seen many people come on my Discord server asking for help to fix their PC after they've run scripts and programs like these that actually make changes they didn't want and they want to revert back. So let's have a quick look at Chris Titus Tech's program here with what he created himself. And again, it's a, probably a fork of other people's work as well, which he's implemented into this application. So we're going to run this as administrator on the, which is on his website. And uh, basically it's going to ask you to install Chocolatey and then it's going to go ahead and open up the application and you can then select some of the settings that you want to do. Okay. So you can see Chocolatey is now coming down and installing. And again, this will give you access to applications that you may want to install on your PC. So we'll let that go through and I'll show you uh, basically what the uh, settings are. I'm not going to go too deep into it because I've covered this before, but I just want to bring this to your attention here. There is a enable and uh, disable uh, feature on here. You can actually restore stuff. Now, this is the first part here, which allows you to install a bunch of different applications. Now, you don't really need this tool to do this because there is websites that do this also for you. So you can use that method as well. This is the tweak section, which allows you to use desktop, laptop, and minimal settings, and you can clear those. So if you're on a laptop, sometimes uh, these settings may differ from the desktop settings. So you can click those buttons up there if you want, or you can manually just check mark what you want to run on your setup and configure your own little settings here if you want to leave certain features on. Now, this is going to disable telemetry and a bunch of other stuff on here as well, like delete your temporary files and uh, and also remove and disable a bunch of other privacy settings on your computer. So bear that in mind. It's also going to run the O&O shut up, which is going to be doing the bulk of the changes to your privacy settings. So you don't really need this application as such. Uh, to uh, do all of this. I'm just showing you both methods here. So this will open up the Shut Up 10 
and it will run the settings. I've cut that bit out because I've already shown that. But basically, once you've done that, you can run the tweaks and away you go. So there are some other things on this application that you can do. You can change your network connections, uh, a power panel and sound settings and other things on here as well if you want to. There's also something about your Windows updates if you want to mess around with those. So depending on how you want to set yours up, you can do uh, using this application. This is your power settings here. If you want to change these, you can do. Uh, if people think this makes a massive difference to their performance of their computer, but I've tested this myself and I haven't seen much difference between the two. But if you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. Now, also, I did mention about the Windows updates. Just bear in mind when you're doing Windows updates, there's the default out of the box settings, security recommended only settings and disable all Windows updates, which isn't recommended. So if you want to just have security updates and no feature updates, that has you covered right there. But I've made videos showing you how to do that with group policy and also how to do that inside the registry. So you don't really need these applications as such. If you go into the privacy and security section here, you can see a lot of this stuff has now been disabled uh, by uh, shut up uh, 10 plus plus. It's basically uh, disabled all of these features. Now it's left the microphone and also the camera enabled. So if you do need to use the camera and microphone, you still can do. And also it's just disabled all of these. So another thing you can do here, if you go into the run box here and type out this command here, this is another little thing that some people like to do, especially if you're on an older system. I don't really tend to do this much on a brand new computer because a brand new computer is way powerful and you don't need to worry about it as much. But I do notice there is a lot of people that go into uh, the advanced settings here and go to performance and basically make changes in here. And this is disabling a bunch of uh, features inside Windows, like all the animations and a lot of the uh, shadowing and stuff like that. So once you go in here, you can adjust for best performance and then you can go in and make some changes yourself. I wouldn't leave these all disabled. I would generally enable these on older systems and I'll show you which ones I generally enable on an older system to make it look somewhat still nice, but it also gives you a bit more performance. So if you're running a bit of a potato of a PC and you don't have a lot of memory, then these little tweaks can help a little bit. But if you've got a modern day computer with bags of memory and stuff like that, this isn't really going to make much of a difference, if any. So just make these changes what you see here and apply these and OK. And basically you should have a, a better uh, performing system on an older system that is. Now the next one we're going to look at is basically services which will lighten up the load of Windows as well. Now a lot of these services are third party services that you might want to disable uh, and get rid of these by going into this area. I'll show you where it is. So let's go down to the run box here and type MS config and click OK. Now be very careful what you're disabling because obviously some of these might be needed and then your RGB lights might not be on because you've disabled that service. But if you see here, hide all uh, Microsoft services and you can disable all. But again, what will happen is some of the services that are needed uh, for maybe your monitor or maybe your RGB or something like that can be disabled. So have a look in, in here and you'll see some software is using a service for updating. And if you don't want them updating in the background, you can just toggle these off and turn them off. Like I said, ROG uh, live service, you might need it. You might not need it. You have to do your own research. But I can tell you right now, the Asus Aura Sync and Lighting service, if you disable that, your lighting is probably not going to work properly in your case. And you're going to end up with uh, rainbow puke sort of colors going around because it's changed the settings here. So just bear that in mind. I've made some changes here to some of the stuff I know is safe to disable, and I'm going to restart the system. And then you can check Task Manager to see what processes uh, have reduced by. Now, I'm pretty sure it's going to be reduced by half here, but you can see here there is a very little processes running 122, and I've had this down as low as 50 and 60, but as soon as you start installing stuff again and doing all of that sort of shenanigans, it will start climbing again. So bear that in mind. You have to sort of weigh up the pros and cons. Is it worth going through all this hassle just to re uh, reduce a bunch of processes which I physically don't actually see a difference in on a brand new computer? Now, I'm pretty sure that people that are running old Intel first, second and third gens will see a difference in their system. 
I can honestly say that with a brand new Ryzen 7700X, I really can't see a big difference between the two because the PC is pretty fast as it is. And I really don't see that little difference in these tweaks. And again, you have to sort of weigh up the pros and cons, whether it's worth doing uh, with all of the headaches that can come with it when it breaks your system. Because there is scripts out there that will break your system and you have to bear that in mind. Anyway, I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. Quite a few people have messaged me about this sort of topic and I thought I'd make a quick video explaining some of the pros and cons to it and I uh, hope this video has been some sort of use. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video. Bye for now.